Hello and welcome to this Blitz Report uh, tutorial around audit functionality and how to eliminate errors in your process areas. Um, so today I'm going to be covering uh, data governance, uh, in particular on master data, which should help you uh, reduce errors in your transactional fl flows. Um, so the idea is that we get to a point where we've got one touch flow where, you know, accounts, invoices, orders flow through seamlessly without having to have IT uh, come in and massage data and so on and remove errors. Uh, whether it's uh, a stuck order, a stuck invoice or perhaps a mis misappropriated account type. Um, or whether you just want to create some metrics, um, then you can use audit functionality, which is out of the box, uh, free to use. Um, some customers uh, are sometimes uh, a bit cautious because they, they're not sure about the performance impact. Uh, so we also will be covering the AWR performance tracking uh, reports that we also provide free, free to use so that you can benchmark before and after uh, enabling audit functionality. Um, I'm going to cover the one touch flow, which is basically I'm going to create an audit on a particular attribute on an item. In this example, we see a product's been shipped to a customer. Uh, it was not defined as shippable, or at least the product wasn't. Uh, so instead of shipping to the customer, it immediately billed them for the item. Not a very good situation. So we'll we'll cover an exception report that can track and block that and stop it happening for you. Um, second is a misclassification, whereby an, a, an account, particular classification, has been set up uh, as an expense instead of an asset. So at year end, the, the P&L uh, balances will need to be, uh, you know, we rolled into retained earnings balance sheet. Uh, year to date, uh, is, is has to be rolled forward. So basically, a heavy IT fix. Uh, so it's better to nip it in the bud, and uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do that using uh, our free to use reports. And then the other one is the metric. Um, this one is an example for delivery uh, delivery in full on time, the DIFOT. Um, but you can also use it for tracking, uh, you know, performance uh, of areas such as planning or sales or, or basically just revenue, uh, you know, any area that you want to keep an eye on, um, you could enable uh, audit function uh, on dates or on volume, etc., so that you can compare and see where you're going uh, in these areas. And then I'll cover the, the, the simple setups. It literally takes 10 minutes per area that you want to track, uh, and I'll run through those steps as well. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so in terms of aud enabling audit, uh, we would go to System Administrator. Um, you would enable a profile to start with, very simple profile. It's called Audit. <laughs> you couldn't have anything more uh, straightforward. You just basically uh, come in here and you would enable Audit. So whether that is already enabled already um, would depend on, you know, you know what what uh, systems are in place for you currently. Um, so audit trail active you can see here it's already enabled um, so if you went down into the security options into audit trail then you would you would see these different functions so first and foremost you'd have to to basically audit your installation so you see here we are already audit enabled for particular objects you see here accounts payable so banks perhaps bank banks on suppliers you might want to track um, receivables is enabled. Um, I'm interested in this example, um, inventory. Um, so I'm just wanting to make sure it's enabled. There you go. If it wasn't, you'd tick this box. Then you would go and define your groups. Um, very straightforward thing to do. I'm going to pick um, items because that's a group that I pre-created. So I created a group called items, uh, enabled it, and then I added one table to it, but of course you could add much more, but in this particular case, uh, that, that would make sense to just have items there. You would then run your group update report, which I'll show you shortly. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got your tables. So for example, MTL system items uh, might be a table you want to track. And then here you've got the, the columns that uh, are available for tracking. Uh, here we've got segment one, so that'd be the item change name, shippable item flag, which is relevant to our example. I've added this uh, customer order enabled. I've also added that and so on and so forth. 
to add new columns you basically just do down arrow and then select the column obviously if you're doing on a transactional table uh, you should be mindful of performance um, so if you're going into a high volume area you, you probably don't want to enable too many columns um, but as, as mentioned you can run our AWR reports to check uh, performance before and afterwards okay so Given that that's now enabled, you would run two requests and the two requests that, that you would have to run, one of them is called the audit group. Um, so basically you would uh, just come in here and run the audit group. Um, so that's that, the, the group validation. And then the next one is the audit trail update table. So that's if you've added additional columns to, to audit. Uh, I'm not gonna run it because we've already run it. Um, so having set all of this up, I'll just cancel out of this, you would then basically go into your audit trail reporting uh, and then you would, you would launch audit trail against the particular um, entity that you've just enabled. So in this particular case, oops, it's items. Um, then you would you could then decide whether it's between update, insert, last or uh, delete would be an option. And then you go ahead and select your column. So in this particular case, we would we wanting to select shippable. I'm going to select another column called ATP flag, and then I'm going to select uh, one of the lead times um, that I've got enabled here. So for example, full lead time. So once you've done that, you would run the report. Um, the report then goes obviously through the concurrent process and goes into a running state. I've got one here that I, I ran earlier. Uh, and that is the official audit report. So let's have a look at, at that. Um, as you can see here, um, the actual report itself is not very user friendly. Um, whilst it's got the MTL system uh, items table in it, we can see what time something was changed, but we can't really see who did it. Uh, and obviously um, there's no organization on here or item code. So basically it's not usable. Uh, so what we would advocate is that you would run uh, one of our reports. Uh, it's a Blitz report, and uh, as you can see, Blitz report runs in EBS, uses the same commands as EBS. Um, you would go ahead and run our audit tracking report. Um, we've got a couple of hundred reports that, that are available free to use. Um, you can run, within the free version, you can run 30 reports, um, and that's free for life. So you see here, I've already... I've got my preferences saved for my parameters. If you were a user, you wouldn't have this setup button, uh, so you couldn't change the, the actual report itself. Um, Blitz report is installed within 30 minutes, uh, so it's a very simple installation and training, as I mentioned, is, is pretty much uh, negligible. Um, having selected your columns, your, your table, when you want to audit from, which columns you want to audit, we then give you the additional functionality is within that table, do you want to display non-audited columns? So we say, okay, segment one description of the item. And then of the joining tables that, that are available, primary key tables, for example, MTL parameters, I want to fetch my organization code. So now I've built a report that's, that's usable. Um, so, and that's just by configurable parameters as opposed to having to write SQL. Um, you can obviously tailor the report, the, the standard report further. You could copy it and add much more functionality as required. But this could be emailed uh, on a daily basis as it runs through the standard concurrent uh, manager function. So you could have it emailing your exceptions on a daily basis. So you see here from left to right, we've got the table. We've got what the audit type was. In this case, it's an update. Um, the organization, so in this case, M1. So this is a vision database, obviously. The column you're auditing, uh, so here ATP, planner code, um, what the old value is and what the new value is. Uh, so very straightforward thing to do. Um, in this particular case, I didn't, uh, I, I told it to go back a certain date, but if I wanted to go back further, I could have found other changes. But typically you would, you would probably increment this daily and then have a, just an exception reporting. Uh, developed or, or, or running within your within your system. So if you wanted to, as a user, what you do get is you get the ability to, to create templates. So as a user, it uses a uh, similar to folder technology where you could take some of these uh, non 
user friendly columns out so as a user if you didn't want to display those uh, you could simply hide them like that as you would with standard uh, folders and now you've then got a, a shareable folder that you can or at least report um, set of defaults that you can share you see it now we've got a reduced report so very straightforward to tailor a report so you reduce the burden on IT which is obviously a, a good thing uh, IT also can have the benefit that um, if they are writing these reports for you or using ours they're all version tracked so from a version uh, control viewpoint you get the ability to, to go from unit test to uh, system test uh, to UAT etc uh, you can import export the reports between all your environments and you can put your version versioning in here so you don't actually need to have a version control system um, so let's uh, just go ahead and uh, have a look at some of the other things that you can do so uh, as a user or as a developer you could simply create a, a new report um, very simply um, and this follows the VPD uh, security policy so you, your developers could all work within EBS uh, and you could be m mindful of the fact that they are secured by your VPD policies so they wouldn't be able to see sensitive data perhaps uh, some of your accounting data or your HR data so creating a new report is very straightforward you basically would create the report uh, in real time sitting next to your user perhaps uh, which which tends to be you know the favorite thing you know if you're an analytical type person um, who just wants to drop a SQL into the system um, you know from an administration viewpoint you're safe in the knowledge that these reports are version controlled um, tracked and secure um, so, so there isn't anything uh, in terms of risk here um, so let's just move on to um, getting this this uh, select uh, written so MTL parameters would be a good one to join to um, and then we'll just uh, pop in where one equals one so from a, a new report uh, creation very straightforward uh, as you can see um, I'm just doing here uh, and I'll just complete the report uh, and then I'll show you how we secure it um, if I was a faster type it would help but uh, speed is not of importance so let's just give that uh, an alias um, so I think uh, from a, an SQL viewpoint I've got it good I want to add in a parameter so you see how quickly it is to add new parameters you just basically pick from what's there or you could create your own of course uh, I'm going to pick up the organization code and then it's going to match on organization code when I run it um, I'm also going to look at when things were changed um, so last update within a number of days in this case uh, I'm going to set the default to 100 um, I'm going to assign it so you can you can pick a level to assign uh, I'm going to pick a user because I'm the only one I want to see this and I'm a developer at the moment you can categorize um, so if you want to have users within the different areas of your operation so you see here we've got all these different areas that we work from um, cost accounting database data management operations the, these are the core areas you see here we've got many uh, different reports to, to use here um, you could give it any one of these categories or you could create a new category I'm not going to do that I'm just going to go ahead and run this report so at this point it should validate uh, whether I'm doing things correctly so I'm going to flip my organ my responsibility as well because it is obviously using the um, responsibility you see here it'll give you an immediate um, view of what is wrong if you've made a problem you see here I've got MSIB as an invalid uh, identifier so it's it's as helpful as it could be in say for example toad so what it's saying there is I forgot to give the alias and that was just so I could demonstrate uh, how the things how this works uh, not really anyway so you you, you get my point that it, it's you're able to quickly develop reports and assign them um, in this case we're not, not going to see much data because um, it's in v1 so I um, I'm going to have a look at what we've got here. We've got org ID, we've got, uh, sorry, inventory ID, organization ID. All the data is fully formatted and fully filtered immediately. So the data types are recognized. You can see here that this is a very wide report. And uh, as a user, that's probably not very helpful because we want to just see the pertinent things. So you'd go back as a user 
and then you'd come in here and then you'd define a new template so this would be the user uh, element uh, so basically I could just basically hide all and then come over here and I could say well of course segment one um, I need to have description so you could nip down and, and add your description but in the meantime I want to look at some of these attributes as well um, so we're writing uh, basically as a user we're creating our flavor of report here uh, and you know you could just query in here and, and, and do pick out any column that you want to report on in this case I want description and I'd like that to go up the, the if I didn't want it rather I could just double click and, and send it away or I could just re number it as number one and it would jump the queue and come up to the top of my column now when I run that report it'll be a very easy report to uh, review because the columns are now exactly as I want and then you could just add additional parameters you see here that's very quickly to do uh, you can change parameters and you can schedule this uh, and email it as an exception report so that's one flavor of uh, blitz report um, and I said a lot of these are seeded um, just to go back to our, our little presentation um, one of the reports I was going to show you, so I've, I've covered the, if you like, how to stop the one touch transaction flow by tra tracking your master data or making sure it doesn't go wrong. Uh, similarly, you could you could put this on um, the value, F&D flex value classification. You could ensure that when you create those accounts that you would then, within a range, you would then isolate those errors before they uh, cause you big issues and then the DIFOP here um, if we were to run our standard DIFOP report deliver it on time in deliver in time on full um, and I'll just show you that particular report um, so it would be an ONT report and DIFOT so if, if we look at this report um, in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip across into uh, because it does observe the responsibility and org access. So I'm going to go across on to vision operations here. This is a, a demonstration system we're using. Um, we put Blitz report on all of the menus. You can actually add it to things like order organizer if, if you wanted to. Um, and that makes for exporting uh, real time data much quicker. So, for example, um, you know, if you were to add it here, you can put the Blitz report to replace order organizer, which is very slow anyway. Uh, so why, you know, why not do that? Uh, so if we were to run this report, for example, this is the complete orders, headers and lines that would then dump all of the data immediately into Excel. Um, and then you've got all of your order data. But we then took a version of this report and then we um, we created the um, the DIFOT metric report, which is uh, a key metric for measuring your order process. And then if you look look at this one, uh, as I mentioned, they all go through the concurrent uh, manager, so you can see the different statuses as they roll. Um, this is now going to go to complete and open our Excel. Uh, we prefer to use the um, you know the a better browser than <laughs> than the standard Internet Explorer. So we're using Firefox. Uh, because you can then open these sheets automatically uh, rather than actually having to click on the output. So this one is showing you when things are shipped in full. Uh, so effectively when zero it's shipped in full. If it wasn't shipped in full, you could filter on these exceptions. Uh, and this is over here is telling you uh, in red uh, when things are, are running late. Uh, you could then go one step further and use audit function to monitor the scheduled ship date so that you can keep your help your planners get on track with the supplies and make sure that the throughput of your or at least your your measurement uh, is is then monitored and you can see uh, your performance and really zone in and improve on which suppliers or manufacturing processes or perhaps warehouse uh, are not actually delivering uh, as you expect in terms of times and promises and so on. Uh, so, so that's the DIFOP. Uh, let's just go back um, and have a look uh, where, where we've got to. Um, so the sysadmin steps are very simple. They're summarized here. I'm not going to go through them. If you want a copy of this presentation or, or to talk to me, please do. Uh, my name is Glenn Whelan. I work at Enginatics. I've worked with Oracle since uh, the early 90s for Oracle, and then I've implemented Oracle uh, at many organizations. Um, so, 
as I, as I described to you before, the, just to recap, the limitations of standard reporting, you can't get uh, enough information. So far better to use our uh, free to use reports where you can see the user who did it, what time, uh, what table and, and what organization uh, they did it in. In terms of the usages, well, there are many. Uh, so a business analytical person, someone a bit functional with some SQL skills uh, could be running and creating reports next to a user. IT departments could be creating perfectly formatted and um, performance uh, tuned reports themselves delivered to the business users. Um, as I mentioned, we've got many toolkits available, preceded. Uh, there are 200 reports at least in our library. You can go and have a look at those on ngulatics.com anyway. Uh, in terms of uh, summarizing what we do, um, well, we're EBS forms, integrated full standard uh, keys. In fact, we go on and enhance some of those. Uh, this, the assignment security is there. The VPD policies are met. Uh, we can translate uh, Discoverer. And so the way we would do that, we would import Discoverer or BI reports. So you could basically import uh, any number of your own BI publisher reports or Discoverer, or indeed, if you've got Excel for apps, we can bring those in as well. Um, you can output as well to any number of sources, including uh, Microsoft um, uh, BI or Tableau. Uh, it's very fast for doing that. We support um, the ECC. Uh, the new enterprise command centers. So we allow uh, you know you to get real-time data, but much more of it uh, than you would get from ECC. We also manage those data pushes, uh, which can be complex and difficult to manage uh, through the Blitz report. Uh, we've got those as well. Um, in terms of tracking setups and so on, we've got that fully covered as well for you. Uh, so in summary, uh, Blitz report, there are no data volume limitations, uh, whether you want 1 million or 10 million, we would just create 10 sheets uh, within Excel. There are no performance implications because we're not using XML. Uh, so if you want to bring a million records, it's not going to take anything like uh, longer than a minute or two. Um, so why not come and have a look and try the system for yourself? Uh, you can go to our, our demonstration site or you can go and have a look at some of these videos. Uh, like I said, uh, pleasure to have had you looking at uh, this short uh, video and by all means do uh, contact with me.